Mm -hmm. Well, this is the best steak I've ever had in my life. That is the best steak you will ever have in your life. As much as I appreciate for once not having to eat my lunch from a hot dog stand, what are we doing here? Can a man just take out another man in the middle of the day for some steak and some wine and some cheesecake that's gonna knock your socks off? Uh, some men could, but I think you and I both know that you are not one of those men. True that. Mm. Want some more wine? Don't mind if I do. And you gotta try this cheesecake. Oh no, Lewis, I'm fine. Oh. You know what I mean, right? What do you think of that? Hey, Lewis, mm. how's the steak? Heaven. How about you? Best steak you ever had? Uh, best steak I will ever have. <laughs> you thought him well. What are you guys, brothers? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. Lewis here's got a lovely sister, Esther, two wonderful parents. Who the hell are you? I am Mike Ross. Lewis and I work together. I wanted him to know who he was working for. Oh. And I would like you to know who's working for you. Is Mike here? He's the best steak you'll ever have. You want to know what you're working for? Tina, Gina, Adrian. They've been here 50 years between them. They are my family. That's what you're working for. I, I understand. I do not understand. Eminent domain. Final hearing's Tuesday. If we don't win, this place becomes a shopping center. Then this place becomes a shopping center because nobody wins eminent domain cases. But what if we did, Mike? Then he'd get to keep his restaurant. He would get to keep his dream. And I would get to keep my dream. And what is that? To rewrite the law. And the way to do that is to win an unwinnable case. What do you need me to do? Oh. Lewis, you said five. It's only 4.30. I've been here since we ate. Been researching every eminent domain case ever tried, starting with 1905. Clark v. Nash. I thought you wanted me to be doing the research. I did. But if I don't do it, too, how can I help you? You're helping me? Yeah, I help you help me. That's how it works. Help me help you. <laughs> what? Help me help... It's Jerry Maguire? Jerry Mc what? You... Okay, if you've gone over every case file, then you know that the reason nobody wins is because there is no chink in the armor. Well, then we no. make a chink of our own. Hey. Hey. How's it going with Lewis? You know, it's actually not bad. But the truth is, I would rather be... No. What? Come on, it's the middle of the night. Lewis could be back at any minute. I can be fast. I know. That was a one-time thing. Mm -mm. Enough. Enough. I I... Okay. Yeah, you're probably right. The last person we want casting us is Lewis. Did it ever occur to you that he's trying to recruit you? Can we just for once assume that Lewis doesn't have an ulterior motive? I got us some refreshments. I will leave you two to your work. So? Yeah. Lewis, it's the middle of the night. Where did you get all this? I'm the new quartermaster, remember? <laughs> okay. Here, check this out. Whoa, no one's thought to come at it this way. Mike, this is outstanding. I actually got the idea from a movie. Moneyball. I thought you hated sports. Moneyball isn't about sports. It's about math. Exactly. One problem. It's outside the scope. What if it weren't? What if I could fly? Well, I can't help you with that, but if we want to get it in the scope, we just have to get the other side to put it there for us. The first time I ever had steak was at Peter's. I mean, I'd had steak before, but I never had steak before. But that's not why I'm here today. You see, halfway through the meal, Peter came over to my table and he asked how I would liked it. He wanted to know because he cared. He cared about me. I don't make friends very easily, but the second I set foot in Peter's Steakhouse, I had made a friend for life. And that is how Peter treats every single person who walks through his door. So I don't care what they say. Your Honor, this is not a public benefit. Your Honor, I'm, I'm touched. It makes me want to run right over there and get a steak. But as for the Supreme Court decision in Kelo, public benefit is determined on a quantitative, not qualitative basis. Well, I'm glad you brought up Kelo because we happen to have some quantitative evidence right here. Kelo was decided in 2005. Eight years later and still nothing has been built on this land. No jobs created, no taxes collected, no money made. Zero quantitative benefit. 
Just because they say it will be better doesn't mean it actually will be. Even if it were true, we have every right to do it. The state determines benefit, not the court. And until such time as the law has changed, you have no authority to affect the state's determination. Uh, Your Honor, you can establish authority today. <laughs> There's no basis for that. You have no choice but to uphold the established practice of eminent domain. I'm afraid opposing counsel is right. Demolition begins next week. I just remembered something about Moneyball. The A's never actually won the World Series. Sorry, Lewis. Now's not the time to be sorry. What is it the time for? Get in. No, I think I'm good. Mike, there's nothing to be afraid of. It's just good, clean mud. That doesn't make any sense. Is this about the fact that I'm in the nude? Please don't harp on that. Yeah, I'm just saying, I know how the younger generation gets hung up on that stuff. But you don't have to worry because you have your own self-contained unit. Okay, if I get in, will you stop saying words? <clears throat> you know, if you're going with boxers, you're not gonna have them later. You're gonna have to go smokeless. Oh. Lewis. Yeah. This is the best damn mud I've ever had. Hey, I... I know why you picked me for this case. I wouldn't have picked you if you didn't. If you wanted me to be your associate, why didn't you just ask? Because you would have said no. Lewis, come on. No, Mike. I know what people think of me. I know what you think of me. I knew you'd remember all the bad things about working with me. I just wanted to remind you of some of the good ones. I remember all the good ones. But I also remember, after those things, you going back to being the same Lewis I met the first day of work. The Lewis who fired someone right in front of my face for the sole purpose of teaching me to be afraid. You're right. But I remember you once said that my actions matter and that it's not water under the bridge. You've changed me. You make me want to be a better man. Wait, are you saying I complete you? You have seen Jerry Maguire. No, I'm quoting my cinema hero character of Melvin Udall, expertly portrayed by Jack Nicholson in As Good As It Gets. Ah, oh, never saw it. Oh, well then you're lucky. Well, why is that? Because you can still see it for the first time. The first time? Yeah. That's it, the first time. What? The judge. You were making your argument about the first time. He wanted to rule in our favor, but he couldn't. I know, that's why we need him to rewrite the law. No, we don't. Because there's already a provision in the law that works for us. It's in no, section. No, 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 no. First of all, I cannot mix work with mudding, okay? Let's hit the showers. We can't wait to stick it to opposing counsel. Do you need me to give you a hand on that?